this is a customer with only uh, one address, uh, otherwise it would have been add address, because it then adds an address to an addresses field. But this customer in this uh, example only has one address. So you say set the address, and you have before this already defined what that address object is. And then you say to the entity manager, and the entity manager in Doctrine is the interface to the uh, mapping layer, you say to the Doctrine, <laughs> flush the whole thing to the database and use the mapping I defined for it. So you have to define the mapping first. In Doctrine, the mapping is defined in an object, metadata object, class metadata object, it's called. You can input the, no, wait, wait, the, the, the class metadata object where the mapping is defined, you uh, cache that in a production environment. So sometimes people say, yeah, but all that mapping, what does it cost uh, during uh, the, 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 the saving? No, you put the mapping in a class metadata object. You cache that class metadata object during production. So during production, when you say flush this, it's uh, as fast as you would do it directly. You can put, you can input the mapping in such a class metadata object in Doctrine in different ways. Most well known, I think, is the annotations way. I saw Andrew once with a, a posting that he said, yeah, I don't like that. It's also messy because in the uh, definition of your entity, you also say in annotations as a kind of doc block notation, you say uh, how the mapping is. Yeah, that is a bit messy, but it's also very handy because you see the structure of your entity, you see which fields it has, and you also see to which fields it is going in the database. That's, yeah, it's handy, but if you like X XML more, okay, you define it in XML. Or if you like YAML files, files more, you put it in YAML. You know, the successor of XML is YML. That's why it's called YAML. So, so th that's how the name is de 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 derived. It's uh, uh, very popular in the, the Symfony world. Ca it came from the it. It's the same information as uh, XML, but more readable. So you don't have begin tag, end tag, no brackets but just the information, uh, a column, and then identified, indented, you have the uh, nesting, what you normally have in the, in, in the XML and attributes, etc. So it's a readable, the same information. And because it's an object, you can also directly do it in PHP. So there are many possibilities in Doctrine. I use a visual tool which unfortunately is not free, not free at all. Uh, it, you, you make a kind of uh, class diagrams with it, but only the fields to be pers persisted. Uh, so you get a kind of ERD, uh, a kind of entity relationship diagram. Um, and uh, s you, you just define the entities, you click a button, new entity, <coughs> You define some fields, and you say, okay, I want a one-to-many relationship between this entity and that entity. And then uh, ORM designer makes by itself the foreign key you need for it. You don't have to think about foreign keys. Foreign keys is database language. You don't need foreign keys in your object language, in your, in your PHP. Um, you can output this. Uh, to uh, XML annotations, YAML file, push the button, and then, com then, then comes one of the nicest things, I think, of this, is you when you have your mapping defined in a YAML file or in uh, XML or annotations, you can generate the database schema from that. There's a command line tool in Doctrine and Symfony you use with it, but that's all so easy installable with composers nowadays. Later about that, but you just one push of the button, 
and you can also use that from PHP, and you have your database. And that is so handy what we now have in the installer. We define the schemas of uh, uh, Postgres and of uh, SQLite and of uh, MySQL and of SQL Server. No, you define one schema in your mapping info, and you say, okay, what database do we have now? You want it in Oracle? Okay, <laughs> and you have the Oracle schema. The same for example data. You don't have to define that for the different databases. You could use this to generate that automatically. And you can also generate the entities, at least the fields to be persisted, because you can always uh, give some more rich behavior to an entity. You know, richer behavior is any behavior beyond CRUD. Like uh, uh, a user can log in, that's not CRUD. Or uh, you can check out a, uh, a shopping cart and things like that. And then you begin to program. You know, object-oriented programming, it starts to be instead of a kind of data handling. We, um, we only talk now about uh, one-to-many, many-to-many relationships and, and one-to-one -one relationships. But there is another kind of uh, relation between entities that, is, uh, that should be put into the, that can be put into the database in different ways. And that is inheritance. For instance, say you have a, an object, core content, just name something and you have some objects uh, derived from it. Let's call one article, and another one web link, and another one contact. Then the, uh, the derived objects have some properties that are also in the core content object. You, you can, th those are the, 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 the common objects of all those, the, the common properties of all those objects. And you can store that in different ways in a relational database. You can store it all as one table for every content type. It could be, you don't have to have any joins, so that's very uh, uh, cheap. But if you define new content types, you need new columns. That's a bit tricky, maybe. So there are two other possibilities, and the one is more or less what we use now in Joomla, that's called concrete table inheritance. And the other one is more or less what is now proposed in the UCM proposal or uh, ideas is class table inheritance. Uh, uh, if you want to know more about those things, you can find it in uh, Fowler's uh, Patterns of Enterprise uh, Application Architecture a bit the Bible of, of uh, object relational mapping. And uh, very good reading that book, together with Evan's book about domain-driven design. You can see the two together. You think, now I have more work. No, just start with the first 100 pages of, uh, of Fowler's book. And then you get the idea, it's called the narrative. Then you get the general idea. Then you take Evan's book, and you can see that as a kind of learning book of Fowler's pattern book, because uh, uh, every other page he says you can find exactly how it works in Fowler's book. So that's uh, those two together, it's like two legs and you walk, uh, uh, before you know it, you can walk. Um, it would almost be a kind of, uh, no, leave it. This is a <laughs> Uh, uh, an example of that concrete table inheritance. This is with a player, a, uh, a player as an abstract class, and a footballer as a concrete class, and a cricketer as a concrete class. And in a concrete table inheritance, the abstract class, uh, so core content, wouldn't have his own table. Only the concrete objects have their own table. That's why it's called concrete table inheritance mapping. This is the kind of mapping. You know what the nice thing about this is that you could, I don't say you should, but, but you could even now 
make a unified content model with the same database we have now in Joomla. That's nice. That is backwards compatible. I don't say you should, because maybe there are some performance or other gains to, to get, but it is a possibility, and it's good always to know what the different possibilities are. For, for sometimes now, the choice to make uh, another table of, th that's the other, the, the other possibility, is that the abs abstract class, here the player, has its own table. So core content has its own table, and also the concrete classes. For the rest, is this model is a bit more elaborate than the UCM model, because you can uh, derive something from a uh, from w one content type. You can derive one content type from another. So if you would have an, uh, a content type that would be a bit like articles, but only this as extra, you could not derive that uh, entity from the abstract one, but from the article. That's, that's nice, that's all. You can just use it out of the box. This is easy stuff with Doctrine, just to know it. It is also, um, to if you know those possibilities, you can just uh, concentrate on the objects for what is often done, uh, what we have learned all the time, me too, I'm a sinner too. Now, what we have, uh, we, we have been educated like that with relational database. First thing is you make your data model and you normalize your database. Uh, we, we, have, we have learned that. So that is totally data-centric thinking. You think about the data. And um, do you don't think about what you do with the data. What you do with the data, that's the software. That's the procedures that are operating on those data. Those two, procedural thinking and data-centric thinking, are always together. And what this kind of programming is going to is to object thinking. And that is objects where data and the, and the software operating on it are inseparable. And you make small units of them that you can unit test in isolation instead of a huge database and you do some software there on that table and you join it with their table and, and all the mess you get from that, especially if it gets a bit more um, complicated. You can, if you split the whole mapping and the database thing from the thinking in the objects, you could make it much more clear. Um, nice thing, I, I already said, you could, uh, for instance, the mapping layer uh, define a, that, that it uses uh, a file system or web services. That is not standard in Doctrine. What is standard in Doctrine is to use a no SQL mapping. So you could map to a, uh, a document database. It's called ODM, Object Document Mapping, instead of ORM. So you can use MongoDB easily now in Joomla if you use this doctrine thing and you could, could even combine. I've got a, uh, an example in the cookbook they have in, uh, in doctrine where they use a MySQL database and a Mongo database together. But it's all there in the database stuff. It's you, you, you don't have it in your object uh, model. Uh, I said you don't have any SQL queries then in the, uh, in the objects. But uh, in Doctrine, they have uh, a query language to query the objects. It looks like SQL, but the whole mapping thing about foreign keys and how the objects are, are uh, made together, that is left in the mapping layer. So for instance, you could have a select statement from a customer that you join with an addresses field from that customer. And how it is mapped, and that you use a foreign key for it, if you use a relational database, 
or it, how it is mapped to a Mongo database because then the, the DQL is exactly the same because you query the objects. But how it is put in the database, that's a different thing. So every time you use a customer ID as a foreign key, yeah, that's, that's thinking already in the database. That's a different world when you work only in the objects. Uh, good documentation from for Doctrine. Uh, with a, a, a if you want to get a grasp of it, read that Getting Started, and it gives a, a, a nice, simple example, and uh, it's very stimulating. And in the cookbook, they have some practical examples too. If you want to use this in uh, Joomla, you can, of course, uh, install it very easily with Composer. Everybody uses Composer, no? Not? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's especially if you use PHP Storm. It's just one click of the button, and you have, you say, I want in my project, I want to use Doctrine. Okay, you just say Composer, uh, you go to the Doctrine, you say, bloop. If you want to have a dependency injection container, you think, Oh, that's nice what uh, Symfony has. Just take that and bloop, monologue, bloop, and you have everything uh, in, your, uh, in your project. It's for developers very easy. It's not um, now, it can be maybe once, but not now to install your installation or to deliver to the clients, but that's another discussion we had. There were two articles of Paul de Rai in the Joomla Community Magazine about using uh, Doctrine in uh, uh, Dutch Kai also, about using Doctrine in uh, uh, Joomla. It's only been uh, a bit simpler now, it, as you can see in the, uh, the, 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 they now use some defaults, kind of rad, red uh, solution, so you don't have to define some uh, namespaces anymore. It's, it's a bit easier to uh, to install it. And also, normally, I, I used it for a client, and uh, it's uh, running for some years, and um, yeah, I, I didn't go to, uh, uh, I could not, no, how do you say it? I just hard-coded the prefix in his uh, database to make it easy, but you there is an uh, example in the cookbook, so cookbook also to use a li listener. The whole doctrine thing has a great event system. So on, on any part of that mapping, you can say, okay, whenever you see a table, put this prefix in front of it. Or whenever you see a, uh, a, a hash uh, underscore as a prefix, uh, make another, the prefix you, hold, you get from the configuration because you can easily get the things from the configuration, of course, uh, Joomla configuration, and put that uh, information about the database and your database password and your uh, uh, the database prefix. You can give that to Doctrine so it knows where it can find all the things. By the way, Doctrine uses then PDO as database abstraction also. Always you're doing like that. <laughs> Oh, coming. Uh, maybe just, uh, I'm coming to the questions. I'll be a bit quick first, finished story, almost finished. Um, well, I, I, I'm, I, I will make an uh, uh, installable package for it so you can easily play with it. You don't have to figure out how do, where do I put this to use Doctrine and it's easy to play, but I wanted to have that up and running now for JAP uh, next week. That's what I say to my customers always. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and I'm with, I work with Sablot also, and S Sebastien also s always says next week, but that's French next week. French next week is next month. So, but Maybe I feel a bit French. I always use one model to, use, uh, to put all the objects in. My model is the, the whole of all the entities working together because the associations between the objects, that's the most important thing. 
and from uh, on that m domain model I use different views. But I'm playing with this and with a bit different uh, MVC. Yet another MVC. Yep, we have some others. Uh, we have in the in the in the framework now we have an MVC with a uh, uh, you know model interface. It's called the the interface from the model. It's not called model, mo but model interface. You know how hard we <laughs> tried to get that last year. Uh, but okay. This is uh, the back end of a, a, a view to handle in a, a component that for an agency that handles performers and the performance have acts. So this is a kind of combination of an added view and a list view. Because here you have a name and an alias and a description of that, that, uh, uh, that performer. And here you have a list of acts. You can add an act or you can delete acts, etc. So it's a combination. In Joomla you always have or you have a list or you have an edit view. And where I'm working on is a view that combines the list and the, the, uh, the edit view. That, that's uh, very, because that's so easy to do then in, um, uh, easy to use in Joomla then. But now not, because I, had to, I couldn't use anything of all the uh, uh, J model list, etc., etc., et J view list, and I uh, don't know, all the, all the derived uh, classes and all those things, J HTML, because if you have multiple lists, those toolbars don't work anymore. I had to read really and those uh, uh, published used IDs of uh, that ca can't be the same IDs as the IDs that are here because they're coming from different tables. It, it's uh, not easy to, that costed me the most time to get that working. So what I came across using this in uh, Joomla is that it is very easy, in fact, to uh, I had it up and running in the basics uh, very fast to use Doctrine in Joomla. So I could have multiple values in a field and collections in a field. But I had to change a lot of uh, basic, uh, I, I changed some basic building blocks. So a whole thing that is built on top of that had to be rebuilt. And that is, uh, yeah, not so, uh, that, that was my feeling. So it has uh, advantages and disadvantages. So may maybe you should, the, the one day I think, okay, this is Joomla and I build a layer on top of it, what you are doing, for instance. But on the, on, uh, on the other hand, these are such basic things that I want to change those basic things all the time. But yeah, it has some consequences. But if you do this, you could uh, use if if you if you if we would if I would succeed in uh, making a more general view to use uh, those things and m more general ways to use those things, you could easily use hierarchies and nested uh, things without putting that in JTable nested. You could uh, have fields that are objects and objects that can be collections of other objects. You can, you could build a UCM with a mapping and a structure separated, not so database oriented. You could have structure in a mo model, which you would otherwise maybe put in an HMV, um, HMVC. Because I've, for instance, I've seen in Nuku once from Dave, an implementation of uh, uh, an, uh, I've seen an implementation of, in, uh, of, of a shopping cart, no, of an, uh, an order and order lines in HMVC. So in the view, as you do that in, in Nuku, in the view, there was another uh, controller called to put the order lines in the, the order uh, object. I think then you are putting structure, the structure 
of how your objects are related, and that is the information you should use in your model, that is where it, where it should be, that, that is not a view of your objects, that is the core of what your objects are. And you can put that in, if you, if you use this, you can put that, that in your model instead of in your, uh, in your view. So you could have some better object-oriented programming, maybe beyond the, uh, the database normal normalization paradigm. Thinking in foreign keys and, and uh, uh, joining that, etc. And you could have, uh, you, you remember in the start of the presentation, we, we sung a bit of Flipper. Yeah. Flipper always returns. And uh, well, what did we do? If my mother would ask, what did you do there? I would say, well, we were singing flipper and we could all the flipper song and we could all sing that in a different ling language uh, yeah she said okay I understand I say you could also say it a bit different what we were doing is we were just singing a song and that was associated with a unique key and uh, that's called multilingual she would say, what have I done wrong? <laughs> Probably. So, d you know, we, we... domain that you want to model, clearer models. And that's about uh, it. So I would say, are there any questions? Question of Nicholas. Uh, those trees use these uh, blocks to connect to the database? Yeah, it used to be old. The, yeah, it, it now, at least for the ORM, the yeah. object relational mapping uses PDO, or the PDO is only relational yeah. databases. You you cannot for the video that uh, it is uh, uh, done differently in Joomla and uh, in Joomla often uh, in, in some hostings you cannot share you cannot make it the same a different connection to the same database yeah that's <coughs> yeah. yeah but I didn't encounter that problem now so with thanks <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It is all, all especially clients that ho that use Akiba Backup because they're sometimes uh, running on Steam or uh, uh, I don't know different uh, old. Yeah, yeah. A question of Wilco. No, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I, I just. I, I make custom uh, 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 extensions. I hit my wall, my head against the wall for every time 
that I encounter all that one-to-many, many-to-many relationships. Also in Upu and also in uh, uh, Joomla, it's all the same. So, and this gives an easy solution. And it's more, maybe we could use some things from this, maybe doctrine. It's already there for years, so it is tested, it is optimized, there is a lot of uh, experience with it, many people use it, so we are not alone in it. Half the wil world uses doctrine, sometimes looks like, but I'm more in that into that world. But, what's the downside? but there's always a downside, and, and, and maybe you should not start with this is the best for the, the core of Joomla. Uh, of course, because I'm working with it, uh, uh, it would for me be very handy if this would be the basis in Joomla and uh, I, I don't have to do this and it would be uh, and everybody would be happy but uh, I've never thought of other problems you would encounter with that even. Other questions from you? Yeah, my, my main downside was that it is so uh, so uh, uh, basic in Joomla that you have a uh, uh, y you have one uh, table row is one object, and that you have plural views and singular views, and that is so everywhere in Joomla that you have to change everywhere. Have to you have to rebuild a lot of things. So that's a, a downside now, but. I'm busy rebuilding that because I need this. So maybe we can use some of it once. And maybe if some other people are also building other things related to this, because we don't have to use doctrine, uh, like Matthias is working with Kunena on a, uh, a similar... Uh, uh, uh So, so you see, yeah. but what I like very much about the doctrine solution is that there is a lot of experience in it. Yeah, it's tied in the Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, but you can, you can on all levels change the details if you, because the SQL in doctrine is generated, but if you uh, if you think yeah, but uh, I don't like that SQL that can be optimized, then you can always uh, intervene in the generated SQL and replace it by other SQL. That's nice, and it's all cached. That's also the because you if you do have set all those layers, then you have a performance problem, of course, to get it that running. So they have put caches on all levels. And that, that's also very, uh, very nice. Y you know, this is an abstraction layer higher. And sometimes when people talk about uh, performance, I have to think of the old days when we started using higher level uh, languages like Fortran and Argol. And all the people still in assembler language said, yeah, but I can make that that loop much more optimized than what that compiler uh, uh, outputs. Yes, of course. If you work two weeks on, uh, on that loop, you probably have it optimized a bit more. But are those two milliseconds you gain with that, are they worth the two weeks work? Or are the, the two weeks we, we gain in development by working on a more abstract level, are they worth it? Yeah, and then also to make the whole file system fit physics. So actually, yeah. you end up having physics the whole time compiled. You, you see it also with, uh, with Doctrine. Doctrine exists some years now. So the SQL that is generated is better and better. You know, Doctrine works with a unit of work. You, uh, you do all kinds of things in the, in the object space. You update things, you delete things, etc., and then you say flush. 
So all the changes that are done in the object space in the, in the, in the model are uh, uh, collected and are put into an SQL. And there has been uh, put a lot of effort in optimizing that SQL. So maybe you even get a more optimized SQL by having it generated automatically than what you would you than what you would do yourself yeah, no because no. you don't have the overview. You can always also see after sending the data to the user, so you see between doing some sets of tasks, send the data to the user and then you continue doing it. So you can uh, do it after sending the page so you can page a uh, page for it's much much faster on pages. Yeah. Yeah, it's all decoupled. Uh, and when we have multi threading in PHP, it's even faster. Uh, that's another story. Uh, uh, well, uh, I would say uh, thank you very much. There was a la last slide. Thank you. But, uh, <laughs>